Hi guys, welcome to class. Now, let's talk about bacteria. Well, this is a diagram of a bacteria cell, which you call bacterium. So, bacterium. Now, I recall telling you the other time that uh, bacteria are ubiquitous. Now, what do I mean by ubiquitous? It means they are everywhere. They are in the food you drink. Presently, the air you are currently breathing contains bacteria. They are even in space. In spacecraft that travel into space, they are present there. In the deepest part of the ocean, in deep oceans, in the Earth's crust, bacteria is present. There. Even in the bodies we inhabit, that is, our bodies are breeding grounds or have reservoirs of bacteria. As you go further in microbiology, you come across this thing which you call normal flora of the body. And they are present in non-sterile zones, that is areas where, where the fact that they are there makes that place non-sterile. Normal flora of the body, although there are some places where you will find bacteria like the heart, the muscles, the kidneys, the brain. Because if you find bacteria in those places, the person is as good as dead. If you find bacteria in your heart, it's causing, it's going to cause a condition called infective endocarditis, or rheumatic heart disease. If you find it in your brain, it's going to be causing a, a meningococcal encephalitis, or more like an encephalitis. So when you find it in the brain, it's not, it's not normal. That's just what I'm trying to say. If you find it in the kidney, it can cause what you call glomerulonephritis, where you can come down with nephrotic syndrome or nephritic syndrome. So normal flora of the skin. So there are areas in the body where naturally you see bacteria. Your skin is even a very good breeding ground. On this, your skin is abundant with Staphylococcus epidemides. You can also see some Staphylococcus saprophyticus. So on your skin, you find Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus epidemides. Now, in areas like your upper respiratory tract, you see the strep guys. Streptococcus pyogenes, streptococcus pyogenes, you find it in the upper respiratory tract, that's URT for short. Now, um, you know, I told you that Anton von Leeuwenhoek, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, when he wanted to view those cells, part of where he picked the specimen from was the scraping from his tooth. What was he trying to show? He was actually viewing streptococcus mutans. And this guy, this Streptococcus mutant, is responsible for dental plagues. That is, those um, tooth decay. Now, among the bacteria, if there's one bacteria that is so abundant, it's what you call the Staphylococcus aureus. But these are just species of bacteria. Now, we'll get into how they come about these names, Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, when we're talking about classification of bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus. Yeah, so, there you go. Now, what I'm just trying to say is that bacteria is ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And even in our body, they are present in an healthy individual. And healthy individual is still an abingal of a great number of bacteria. Because there are areas, even in your stomach, your small intestine, your upper respiratory tract, your lower respiratory tract, your skin, all these areas are brimming with um, bacteria. And they are not harmful to because they actually serve their a purpose. You understand? So because they themselves prevent the um, invasion of other microorganisms, because it's more like a competition, they are there already, and if they are more abundant, they will prevent other invasive microorganisms from taking a seat within your body. So that's also a form of protective function. Now, generally, when um, scientists went about this classification of living things, the general classified living things is that you are a prokaryote or a eukaryote. Now, prokaryote in the sense that you are a single cell organism that does not have a definite, no visible nucleus, no definitive nucleus. The word prokaryote comes from the Greek, which means before nucleus. Now, the other group of organisms, they will refer to them as eukaryotes. Eukaryotes means they are complex organisms, that is, they could be double cell, that is, having two or more cells. And they have a well defined nucleus. Their nucleus is visible. Why I mean visible? Not really to your eye. That is, when you look under the microscope, you will see the presence of a well defined nucleus. For the eukaryotes, and we have abundance of eukaryotes. In fact, we say bacteria are the only surviving prokaryotes. So bacteria are even older than even the existence of man. That's just the truth. Bacteria, so they have been present day of time. 
And the funny thing is that our planet Earth, the activity of planet Earth is intertwined, our activity is intertwined with that of bacteria. And even for the survival of this planet, you really need bacteria because these are, they form the major class of decomposers. And if you and in ecology, you understand that it's important that this, um, these decomposers do their function because when you have plants, you have animals dying, they have some nutrient that is present in them. And if there's nothing to break them down to release those nutrients, those nutrients are going to die off with them. And if there's going to be a cut in supply, the nutrient cycle is going to be affected. And that's why they are important for the existence and survival of this planet. So in next class, we're looking at how we can classify microorganisms. Uh, brother, how we can classify bacteria. See you next class.